Just let me go, please. Nah. Sure to enter out. Sure to in. It got a detector. Sure to attack. Sure to Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Conker's Bad Fur Day. We are right in the middle of the It's War chapter at the moment. I believe we're about halfway through it. And, well, Conker seems to have lost his cigar, but continuity will fuck itself in the ass at some point and he will have that back. So there seems to be some uh, rather uh, crudely animated sprites flying overhead. is a little bit different to the usual army regulation attire. What? What is it? Oh yeah, it's uh, experiment number G7224. I'm the first to be fitted with this. It's an indestructible, uh, titanium laminate. Right. So what does that mean? Oh, uh, it means if somebody shoots me, I don't die. Really? That's a pretty good idea. I'll get me some of them. That's the only one. They're very expensive. Anyway, stick behind me and you should be alright. That can be your Operation Squirrel Shield. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Right, which way? Ah, uh, teeny meeny. Miney? No. Right, go. Alright, so we now have Rodent following us. And he will act as a sort of shield, like he said, so you'll see how that works. So this is actually uh, not so much a combat section as a platforming section, and there will be a few more of these coming up. Uh, platforming sections, I mean, not explicitly similar to this. So we're just going super. Yeah, so you just want to go super slow so that the spider bombs and the uh, falling uh, missiles don't kill you. So you can see they're sort of uh, foreshadowed a bit there, quite literally with a shadow. And you can hear the noise of the spider bombs when one gets near. Just waiting for it. be all clear at the moment. It's a bit weird. So if you're actually running at full speed, you're more than likely going to get one of those on your head. Fuck, here we go. You're more than likely going to get one of them to drop on your head. And that will be an insta-kill, I believe. 
and the spider bombs might be an insta kill as well, though I'm not positive on that. Now you will have to fuck. You will have to actually hide behind Roden and pull the Z button to crouch. And doing that will render you invulnerable to the explosion, but if you just stand behind him without doing that, you may actually get a bit of the blast. I love the explosion effects. How it actually makes holes in the environment. It's pretty neat. And we're getting holes shot in the screen at the moment. I'm not sure if there's actually any real gunfire or if it's just an effect. I'm hoping, fuck, I'm hoping it's just an effect because I am quite exposed here. Oh good lord, this, this bit is a doozy. So, okay, there we go, yep, there is bullets firing now, fuck. Oh, they're parachuting in, alright, come on, come on. Let's get this done, fuck, oh shit. Alright, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it or not. Fuck, 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 there's a dude just there. Fuck. Yeah. Alright, alright, right. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Whoa, 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 fuck, no! Oh, shit. Um, fuck. It's alright, the door should still be open. Yeah, it looks like it. That's okay, then. Yeah, that the run to the uh, the run to the door after doing that is always hard. Whoa! Hmm. At least there's no teddies in here. Oh, a tank! Now that may come in handy. Oh, a tank! Uh, it's a class 22 as well. I haven't got one of them yet. But he got one. Hey, where you going? Uh, yeah, we will be driving that thing, just to let you know. And it doesn't control, like, the best thing in the world, but it's hardly the worst either. So you just want to jump in it. And, again, I don't think I have enough buttons on my controller to be able to control this as well as I would like to. Because you can rotate... Yeah, here we go, it's the C buttons. You can rotate the top of the tank independently of the rest of it, but don't have enough C buttons. Before we go on though, we have a little uh, side step we need to do. Oh shit. So again, this is another platforming section. It uh, seems like uh, at some point the developers thought they weren't throwing enough of these at- Whoa! Fuck! Fuck! Fucking acid, man. Well, hopefully that's opened the door on the outside. But whatever it's done, I think it's one of those let's leg it moments.
Alright, so the door is open, and, well, this is where it gets rough. <laughs> uh, yeah, this isn't the best level in the game. So, I expect I will die a few times here. Now, fucking get in the tank. Oh my god. There we go. I'm not sure why pulling that lever just floods the entire place with acid, but there you go. Gameplay. And here's some more gameplay for you. So this turret is suspended on four legs. And we're going to have to go around this arena and blow off all the, uh, the yellow and black sort of stands that prop it up. And, well, it's not the easiest of areas to traverse because even though I think the tank is immune to bullets, we will have to jump out to knock down these bridges. Now, I remember I used to have a hell of a lot of trouble with this level. Oh, and there's teddies with grenades as well, or like, uh, pipe bombs or something. Now, the tank isn't actually immune to pipe bombs, so we're going to have to blow them up. But you can see the turret shooting at us there, and nothing happened. And missiles just go right through it. And I'm not sure, oh shit, I'm not sure how well you can hear it, but one of the best tracks in the game is on right now. Uh, fuck, no, shit, fuck you, fuck a fuck a fuck a dicks in a bag. Oh, good lord. Alright, we're really fucked now. Gonna have to go check for any more chocolate, see if it respawns or some shit. Oh, the door's closed. They closed the fucking door. <laughs> well, shit. We're basically screwed now, then. Oh, fuck! Oh, are you kidding me? Oh. Oh.
Alright, here we go. Let's try and not try not to fuck it up this time. Oh shit, you can see behind it there's an arrow pointing to the legs. Wow, what what I really love about this game is that the objective is always made clear to you through subtle hints like that. And also, I don't know if you knew this, but... Well, I haven't told you, so you probably don't. But if you stand still for a while, Conker will actually move his eyes in the direction of the... Fuck! Uh, I was speaking something about, uh... Conker moving his eyes. Moving his eyes towards the objective. And it's like... Fuck, Jesus Christ. It's subtle hints like that that make this game really great because it's never confusing what you need to do because it's almost always made clear to you, but it's never condescending either. Because a lot of games these days have a, a giant obnoxious arrow pointing to your objectives and shit. When this really doesn't, it just... It lets you figure it out for yourself. While providing some subtle clues along the way. And that's way better for your, uh, for your game, I think. Uh, oh. Oh well. In for a penny, in for a pound, I suppose. So where the fuck are we now? That's uh, a good question, I think. We are in some kind of underground cave system. But I don't know why there's green lights everywhere. <laughs> or why it's all blue. Or why there's uh, steel bridges underneath here. Or an ocean with submarines in it. Pretty weird, but what can you do? It's Conker's bad fair day. Of course, it's weird. Mummy, oh, oh, my mummy, mummy. <laughs> oh, and, hello, it's the little squirrel. Hello, help me, please. <laughs> oh, it's a little girl. Oh, it's dangerous around here, little girl. I don't think you want to be here. Um, hi. With a book. Hell, you know about that. Uh, school? I never learned things like that at school. Anyway, what is it? It fires a missile, I think. A Teddy Funken U 47 intercontinental ballistic missile. A missile? Yeah, like that one. Ah, uh, always the jerk, Conker, but anyway, we have a rather tedious sort of section here in which we need to destroy submarines. And, uh, well, by tedious, you'll see what I mean, because it'll drive you crazy. Oh, fuck! <laughs> oh, we're off to a good start, shit. No! I love the way, and this is true in uh, most of the areas in the game, but I love how the skybox sort of seamlessly blends in with the uh, with the geometry of the level, because you can see there how the uh, the waves of the water fade out into the into the skybox, and fuck, and I think that's really a really neat uh, technique because. It just, 
it's not as harsh. You can't see where the boundaries of the level actually are. It just sort of fades nicely. And you can see it on the ceiling as well if I look up. But I'm not going to because we're under fucking attack. Oh, good shot there, Bozo. Yeah, this game's full of all sorts of uh, really neat tricks and uh, techniques which I haven't seen before in a game. And it really it adds to not only the uniqueness of Bad Fur Day, but it also just sort of highlights how good the game is. Like, <laughs> and I know I'm uh, just being a bit of a fanboy, because... I know, obviously, it has a lot of problems, and one of those problems is being demonstrated right now, in that the gameplay is not always the best thing ever. Uh, it's probably... The game is probably overshadowed a bit by the cutscenes and, like, the themes and all that sort of thing, and the uh, just the technical aspects which are stunning. Uh, the Nintendo 64 and the soundtrack as well of course and all that sort of uh, overshadows the gameplay which is really when you think about it it's a bit pedestrian at times like right now it feels like not a lot of thought went into this <laughs> um, it just it's not the epitome of game design in terms of uh, actual gameplay And uh, I guess what used to really shit me about the game was the way that all of the levels sort of seem in, uh, interconnected but separated at the same time. I know that sounds kind of retarded and uh, contradictory, but the way, like, because Windy is such a really great hub world, and that sort of falls apart by the time you get to Ooga Booga because it all just sort of seems like a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of unconnected sort of, uh, moments and areas. Because, and that sort of adds to the, the variety of the game, and it shouldn't be taken as a negative, I suppose, but it's just not integrated into the story very well. Like, the game opens up with a very clear premise, you're just trying to find your way home, and then all of a sudden there's an antagonist introduced with um, with the Panther King and the evil scientist and all that shit. But, fuck. But at some point, I think, again, it's uh, about when Ooga Booga rolls around, that the plot sort of just falls apart and it becomes a series of uh, unconnected ideas. And this is partly because of uh, 12 Tales and um, Conquer 64 and all that shit. And it was basically just retooling all the resources to make it able to be used in a new game. But I'd just like it, I'd like the game to have a bit more cohesion. Everything seems really unrelated and random. And I know the point isn't that it's a story driven game, it's all all driven by other things. Definitely atmosphere. But I'd like that whole Panther King subplot to be integrated a bit better, I think. It just sort of disappears after a couple of chapters. But again, that's not to take anything away from the game itself. I think as a whole, it's pretty damn good. It's very solid. But I can... I can see how some, or even most people, wouldn't like it. It's definitely... I guess a thing you had to be there for. It hasn't aged very well. Um, 
But it's certainly a relic in time worth looking at. And I'm quite glad that it never got a sequel. I think the the remake, Live and Reloaded, was just completely unnecessary and just kind of a cash grab, really. Alright, finally, it's all done. So, uh, yeah, I forget what I was talking about. But there you go, I think I said everything I needed to say on the matter.
with a six-pronged attack. as well. Rodent? Rodent? Oh no. He didn't make it. He was a great guy. A superb soldier. A military tactician. And yes, he was mortal. Like the rest of us. But at least we showed that bitch who's boss. Mr. Squirrel! <laughs> Guess what? The show's not over till the little girl sings. Ooh, what's this? A little red button. I think I'll press it. Ooh, and what's that? Lovely countdown. I wonder what's going to happen now. <laughs> Self-destruct. <laughs> oh, give me strength. 